Hey everyone, in this video I will show you how I made this lithium ion phosphate battery power bank with a cool 3D printed and laser cut acrylic case. For this I am using a 22 watt fast charging power bank module that I brought from the ebay.com. It has two type C and two type A ports where you can also connect up to 50,000 mAh power battery. And for battery, I am using an old battery pack I made. You can find that link to that video in the description. One of the batteries has failed and only has 0.34 volts, while other threes are fine. Now let's disconnect this battery from the BMS board. For power banks, it is important to use batteries with same capacity from the same batch or same manufacturer. You should not mix old and new batteries together. This 32650 battery has a capacity of 6000 mAh at 3.2 volts with a maximum full charge voltage of 3.6 volt. Now for this power bank it's going to be a 3 battery in series setup with a total capacity of 18000 mAh. I inserted the batteries into the spacer. Before connecting these batteries in series we need to make sure all batteries have the same voltage if not charge them to the same voltage. I am using my DIY bench power supply to charge these batteries. Meanwhile it's charging, let's 3D print the enclosure. This one is a prototype I made to test if the board fits properly into the screw holes. And it does. Now let's go and print the final version. The filament I am using is the Pro Range Matte Black filament which I brought from Robo.in. It is currently the cheapest matte black filament available on the market. To get such a clean print, I made many modifications to my Ender 3 Max. You can find videos of those modifications in the description. It took 8 hours to print this. The surface looks good and stringing occurs only on the support printed areas which can be easily removed. I also printed the bottom brackets and this small design element. These are the complete 3 printed parts. The link for the STL files in the description. Now let's move to the battery section. All 3 batteries are charged to the same voltage. Now we need to prepare the enclosure. First use the lighter to burn off the strings. Then rub with the plastic brush to remove the burned strings and carefully remove the supports. The R8 resistor on this board needs to be changed based on your battery capacity. The seller page states the default configuration is for 20,000 mAh. The calculation is available on seller page. For my 18,000 mAh battery, I need a 25 kilo ohm resistor. Since 25 kilo ohm resistor is not available, I brought this 24.9 kilo ohm resistor. This small variation won't affect the performance. I am not very experienced with SMD soldering. I am using lead free solder, so it might not look very shiny or clean. After soldering, I just tested the resistance to make sure it is not shorted. The seller recommends using 16AWG cable. Now let's solder the batteries together. The temperature of my soldering iron was too hot, so the cable plastic insulation was slightly melted. Before soldering the positive terminals, I protected the terminal with masking tape to prevent any solder falling onto them and causing a short circuit. Also you should not solder directly onto the battery as heat can cause damage. I am soldering only on the nickel strips. Always use a spot welder or use a battery holder. I am using an XT60 connector to connect the battery and the module but you can also directly solder the battery to the module.
Now the battery pack is ready. Now let's test it by connecting it to the battery. It works. I will do the charging test at the end. Now let's complete the enclosure. I am using this 3mm heatset nut. I set the temperature to 220 degree celsius. If you want to know more about this tool I am using, just check out the link above or the description. Now let's place the module and install the 2mm screws. I was not able to install one screw because it was in the corner beneath the heatset nut. I believe three screws are enough. These 2mm screws are installed without any nuts. So I am going to install 2mm heatset nut at the bottom. Then I will tighten these screws again. And for the switch I 3D printed this and I installed it with a 2mm screw. Now let's put the battery into the bracket and connect it to the module. There is a battery temperature sensor. I used the Cape Town tape to stick it to the battery. The function of this temperature sensor can be modified by replacing the resistors. The detailed instructions are provided on the seller's page. For the transparent acrylic sheet, instead of buying a sheet and struggling to cut it myself, I purchased it through Robo.in laser cutting service. You can simply upload your drawing file and get a price for your part. For this 3mm screw, I need to create a chamfer. I use this drill machine to do it. Be careful if you do it too much it will break. I will upload all these files to my Thingverse page. Link is in the description. I didn't expect the laser cut edges to be this accurate. I am also planning to do the same for other projects. The quality of this acrylic sheet is really good and the transparency is excellent. Now let's install it into the enclosure. I created this small design element to make it look better. Please let me know in the comment section if you like this design or not. Since this is the first time testing this board, I am testing it with my Galaxy Watch, which consumes only 5 watt of power. I tested both USB ports and both are working fine. Now I am going to test the Type-C port with my earbuds. And both Type-C ports are working fine. Now the 22W fast charging test with my S24 Plus. It works. Both Type-C ports support 22W fast charging. For charging test, I am using a 25W Samsung charger. And we can charge this using either of the Type-C ports. 
While charging, the number flashes and green charge indicator is on. One thing that I observed while charging at 25W is the board gets very hot and I can even feel it through the acrylic sheet. So it's recommended to use a 15W charger or provide a proper ventilation and add a small heatsink to the controller IC. What do you think about this power bank design? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe and support if you like it.